All right, how is everyone doing? Thanks for uh, checking out the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? I'm Rich Chalenza. So I'm back in the car driving to actually, um, we are, or I'm, I'm actually heading to, where am I heading to, Nebraska? And what I want to get into today, uh, I'm sorry if the audio isn't perfect. I try to do these podcasts when I have the time to do them. In the car is actually a great place to do them. I can think very clearly when I'm driving. And for the most part, it's pretty quiet. I mean, it's not like sitting in a, you know, in your office or in your bedroom or somewhere else. But for some reason, when I drive, it clears my brain out, I think, because I've been driving for so many years or traveling for so many years. Um, but anyways, what I want to get into today is desires. And uh, all of a sudden, I sound like I'm some fuck, you know, some guy from The Secret or some Law of Attraction thing. Even though I do love all those guys, I've studied all of them. But I think what I want to talk about today regarding desires is how they make people nuts. And um, I'm going to break that down on kind of what how I what I went through and analyzing tons of people that I know. And I think what's happened with our society, especially now more than uh, more than ever, is our desires. Or what we think we want uh, will make us happy when, in turn, maybe it will and maybe it won't. But regardless, if you don't get these things or you don't have these things, it makes you miserable, which I think sometimes may even lead to drinking alcohol, uh, becoming an alcoholic, becoming a drug addict, having other forms of addictions regarding gambling, all different things. I mean, there's tons of different addictions. Uh, Some are good, some are bad, whatever. But I realized over the years, uh, and I can speak for myself, including that I expected to have certain things in different times of my life, or I expected to have them immediately. And if I didn't get them, it was a boohoo fest and I was a bitch. And I really realized this when I was trying to make films and trying to break into Hollywood, hypothetically, and, you know, keep raising money and, if I, you know, all these different things uh, to keep my movie career or my independent movie career going. Now, I was so egotistical. I only wanted to make my own movies. I only wanted to make them my way, and I didn't give a shit, really, about formatting it or doing anything to fall into somebody else's format, I guess you could say, Um, even while making movies, which was kind of ironic because I didn't want to make Hollywood-style films, and at the same time, I kind of wanted to be known as a Hollywood filmmaker, which made no sense, but at the same time, I'm an independent filmmaker saying I don't want to have anything to really do with how they market their films or what or how they actually uh, how their films are produced written directed everything I didn't like anything really about it even though when I would go to LA and I lived in San Diego I felt really at home because there's so many unbelievably creative people there they're just it's really creative and if you love writing and I, I never realized how much I loved writing uh, up until my mid or late 20s I liked writing stories screenplays obviously I ended up writing a couple books so uh, I love being around those type of people it would be the same as I see my family members are in construction or architecture or um, all different types of business that's who they wanted to surround themselves by but back to desires I desired a lot of things Um, I presume I desired even fame along with that uh, now that I look back at it, like, why did I desire fame? I, per, per, in my perception was I was insecure with who I was. So I wanted attention or I wanted others to like what I was doing and that would fulfill me. Now that I look back at that, I, I want to almost call myself a jag off. Like, why weren't you just happy creating what you were creating? Even though I was happy and I call it along the run, making films was some of the best times of my life. It's the journey that's amazing to me. I always tell everybody, your life and journey, it's not just the accomplishments. When you accomplish something, say, for instance, again, my film, at the end of my film, after I went through everything, you know, you write it, direct it, produce it, every, everything is done, then you, you're you done, right? You can only go so far with it. But was the end the happy part, you know, or made me feel the best? No, it was while I was creating was the best times and also creating with others, and helping them with their desires because I dealt with a lot of different people in the entertainment industry making films and in many different industries. And I had to realize, you know, it's not just always about my desire. Like, you know, I have my own desires, but I'm also fulfilling other people's desires. And you got to kind of look at life that way. But 
Back to going crazy on desires again. A lot of people, I think, don't even acknowledge how they behave if they don't get what they want and how it affects their lives, not only their lives, but everyone else's involved. And again, I could speak for myself that when I was making films, I drove a lot of people crazy, including my ex-wife, probably my mother and father, everybody, because it became so self-centered where if I wasn't making a movie, I was miserable. And it takes a lot of time, effort, and money to make movies. And again, everyone's got to all of a sudden revolve their life around yours because you're deciding to do something that you desire. Well, how's this? Go fuck yourself. That's what I felt like saying now to myself. If I ran into myself 20 years ago and said, hey, you're, uh, you know, we get it. You want a big home, which I wanted. And, you know, I wanted, I wanted town cars. I wanted Cadillacs. All these desires I had, I got, actually, I worked very hard. I wanted Rolexes. I wanted all these at a very young age. And I got them fairly quickly. I worked hard. Um, and I was very fortunate with my father to work in the industry we worked in. And there was no stopping me. And then I kind of fell into a rut, I call it. And those desires weren't fulfilling me. And that sounds crazy because I kind of got the home I, ever, I always wanted, 24-hour security guard. I even ended up having a limo service. All these different type of things were amazing to me at a young age. And I think a lot of people were engulfed with me in that lifestyle and loved it. Right? But then I realized this isn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to go make films. That was a desire. And all of a sudden, because I wasn't getting that accomplished or becoming successful in that, everybody else had to pay the price because of me. You know, I once was goofing around. I once said to my ex-wife, I said, hey, it's all about you guys. You know, everything's about you guys, her and my kids and everything. She's like, no, it's not. It's all about you. It's about you. You make everything about you. You just don't even realize it. You think... You're doing things for us, which I thought in my mind I was doing all these things to help them in the future live a certain lifestyle, right? Or have all these different possessions or be able to live this certain lifestyle that I dreamt of living that that's what they would want. And it's not true, right? It's just not true. Again, you have to step back and say, again, especially if you're in a relationship, because I teach this in my uh, Mastering Self-Confidence program. I try to help men find the women of their dreams. Man, you've got to realize, <clears throat> sorry about that, I had to get some water. You've got to realize it is not just about you. Who the fuck are you to think everything is about you? And if you don't get what you want, I mean, it's not just, you know, what you want. What are you offering? What are you bringing to the table? I say a lot of times, men and women, what are you coming to a relationship with? What do you got? You got a lot of baggage, I presume. Either your past relationship sucked, someone left you, you left them, you might be divorced, you might have kids, you may have child support, you may have alimony, uh, or you've never been in a relationship, you were too insecure, or blah, 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 right? What, are you, what do you value yourself and how do you value the relationship? Because a lot of people, and I hate to say it, there's, there's a difference between valuing yourself and respecting yourself. That's wonderful. But then there comes a point where you overvalue yourself, I think. And you know what? You're really not the shit like you think you are. Because I can assure you there's a lot of people out there that, not possessions-wise or anything, may just have their shit together more than you do. Mentally, emotionally, maybe even financially. You know, a lot of people think, oh, uh, why can't I find someone? Or there's no good ones out there. Well, what, what makes you a great catch? I tell people all the time, what, why do, you, do you see anybody knocking your door down? I, I can assure you, if you're a good catch, people are going to come after you. It's like fishing. If you got your shit together and you're around a lot of smart, intelligent people and they pick up on that, you're not going to have a problem being in relationships. If you're always alone, you may have to acknowledge you're alone. It's because of you. And it could be your personality. And I even go through that with a lot of women, a lot of family members, friends, colleagues. They'll be like, you know, these bitches... I walk in there, they're this, they talk like that, they treat me like this, they treat me like that. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of how you treat people. You think when you walk in a room, you like address everybody, you're friendly, you think you're always easy to deal with, you think it, you know, it's, it's just them be treating you that way? Listen, if you're comfortable with who you are and you treat people with respect and dignity and they don't treat it back to you, you just move on. But I can assure you, if you know what you're doing and you know how to maneuver your way around people, they're only going to gravitate towards you. You just can't realize your behavior is the one who's reflecting that. 
But again, desires, a lot of people have physical desires, right? You want the home, you want the car, you may want the girl or the guy, whatever you want. You need emotional, uh, I guess you would say, like the desires to learn how to become, I'm fucking that up a little bit. Let me say this a different way. And I don't want to edit that out because I like when I screw up, to be honest with you, because it makes me reprogram my brain. Plus, maybe people, when they're listening, it catches them and say, what's he talking about? (laughs) So your desire should be learning how to control yourself from an emotional standpoint and from, like, your mind. Like, your desire should be to learn more about who you are, right? Become smarter. Acknowledge your behavior, the things you're doing right, the things you're doing wrong. Because a lot of people, you know, they scrape over that. They throw that aside. They think their identity is more like, look at my home, look at my car, look at my clothes, look at all these things, which is wonderful. I'm not against that. So don't think I'm all of a sudden telling you that wealth is bad or any of that. That's quite the opposite. I think wealth is wonderful for everybody. I mean, if you want to go live in a shit home, you know, in a bad neighborhood and go through all that shit, or do you want to live in a wealthy neighborhood? I'm going in the wealthy neighborhood. If you got a problem with it, you could go fuck yourself. I'll tell anybody right to their face. And um, I don't care what anyone says regarding that. So, But in this case, from the mind standpoint, people need to understand, once you start understanding your desires, right, not just physical possessions, but mental ones, and, and really... You know, it's really about educating yourself, learning to read more, listening more. Um, there's a lot of things that you probably wanted to do in your life that ne- don't necessarily always add up at the end to you having to buy something or having another payment on something. And it could be something very, very simple, right? It was like, for me, for one, I'll give you an, for example, it was learning a language. Now, I may have to spend some money in the future to get a tutor, But my grandparents and a lot of my immigrant uh, um, family members from Italy used to speak Italian when I was younger and I liked it. But back then I was kind of like, wow, these guys are like, you know, I kind of reflected it. I didn't want to hear it. I almost got nervous. Like, I'm a mirror. You know, I was almost like kind of embarrassed. Are they, what's the, you you know, I just didn't know any better when I was very young. But to make a long story short, I always wanted to learn Italian. So it's not that expensive even at the beginning to go buy a couple books listen to YouTube. That was a desire that I had that I'm still working on. Again, it doesn't take me millions of dollars. I don't have to go live in an estate property, right? And it's kind of very simple. And I talked about this before. A lot of people desire a cup of coffee a day. It's that simple. That's actually one of the most fulfilling things you may do. And I'm always hearing, even from my mother and everybody, you spend four dollars, five dollars on Starbucks, or you go buy these Italian coffees, or you go to Nordstrom's, or you go here or there to buy these elaborate coffees. Just go to McDonald's. I buy the coffee I want every day. I don't care the price. I get what I want. Right? That's something if I desire, and I quit coffee from like high school till like my mid forties. Now I'm back on it with a vengeance because I used I don't I used to drink too much of it. <clears throat> when you grow up, when you're younger, in Italian they do espressos, we do cappuccinos. I overdid it. I loved it. But my, the case being, again, desires, you have a lot of them. They don't all have to be extremely expensive. It could be as simple as you saying, hey, I want to start my own podcast. The truth is, you could go on, uh, what is it, voice memos on your phone, plug your headphones in, and start it right there. You don't need to go, if you don't have the money, buy mics, editing. I don't even give a shit about that. After I made all my films, I tried to make them perfect with audio and do all these things. Um, I said, fuck it. I said, you know what? I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to start interviewing people. I'm going to start doing this. Right now, I'm just doing myself to get my legs into it, I guess you could say. Build up some strength verbally. Figure out how I want to go about certain things. But I'm not caught up with having to critique everything. Because a lot of people paralyze themselves. I call it paralyzing. They're so caught up with, what's someone going to think about me if I do this? How's it going to sound? Oh my God, they're going to have that information on me forever if I go on the internet? Uh, all this type of things. How much money is it going to cost? How much time is it going to cost? Right? Stop with the bullshit. But learn that there's a lot of things you may be desiring that, again, may not be something that's extreme. That's what I'm trying to say. And here's the thing, too, as well. I think a lot of our desires are to impress others, I realized, at least in my life. 
who am I actually out to impress, right? And I think it stems really a lot of it with our parents. It's not our parents' fault. My mother, I realized a lot of things I was doing because I wanted to really impress my parents. Why? I have no idea. I haven't even told them this, but I probably should. So my desire was to always have them two look at me and say, holy shit, I'm proud of my son. I think a lot of people don't say that, but it's deep inside of them. Because I used to love sports and my mother would come to all my sporting events, my dad. And then even afterwards, I, after all my sports, I started to lift weights, get bigger and stronger. One of my identity for them to say, hey, my son, you know what I mean? He's strong. He's powerful. He's this. He's that. I remember my dad used to even, when I got really big and strong, he started to call me the ape. He'd say, send in the ape, <laughs> which is kind of funny when we used to have to collect money and stuff. That's a, a whole other thing. But um, and the bigger and stronger I got, the more my mom liked it too, it seemed like. And I didn't realize even after my divorce, I thought I was too heavy and whatever. My ex-wife or a lot of people, I was. they kind of liked me heavier than thinner. Why? I have no idea. I just didn't feel good being that heavy anymore. Uh, when you're around 240, 250, you're only 5'9", 5'10". I think I'm 5'10". It's a lot of weight to carry around. It just, my heart didn't feel good. But again, my desire back then was to lift heavy weights, become extremely big and strong. And I would eat a steak a day. I spent thousands of dollars a month on food, not for bodybuilding, which is kind of ironic. We're talking about desires. What did I desire and why was I doing that? Back to desires, I had an insecurity complex. No matter how big I got, I felt small. I call it reverse anorexiaism. I talk about it all the time on my podcast. But again, why did I why did I have certain desires? Like why do we have them? We need to acknowledge what makes this desire like what make like what burns inside of us to say we have to have certain desires? Are they helping us or hurting us? I understand. I see so many people, especially and I I went through it a little bit, but then I had to leave. Um, but I had, you know, when you buy certain homes, you know, you buy a home, a lot of people, that is way outside your means, and they have this desire that they have to have a home. I'm, you know, a white picket fence, or I want to live in this neighborhood, or I won't be complete, or I have to have this size home, and it has to have this, and I get it. But I see so many people getting their desires, but they usually end up miserable from a financial standpoint because now they have to work like animals to keep up with the payment and even the maintenance of it. And I see that with sports cars as well. I did a podcast on it that a lot of times what you want, you don't realize all the shit that's attached to that. And that's including expenses, right? So a lot of guys want a Ferrari. Like my cousin brought a Lamborghini and he told me after everything was said and done, he was losing like $40,000 a year. And I was like, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, I brought a new convertible Lamborghini. I didn't realize you're losing between 20 and 25 grand a year. It devalues. My insurance was $7,500 and I only could put so many miles on it or I jumped up from there. The basic maintenance, $7,500 or something a year. Whatever the case may be, that's what he went through. I'm not, don't, if you're you know, a mechanic, I don't know what you may be like. You're full of shit. It don't cost that much money. That's what he told me. Regardless, to, be, to, be like, to really jump in and, and own a car like that, I don't even think after he got it, he realized the value of once he pulled it off the lot and he wanted a newer one. So you're pulling it off the lot, how much value you're losing it there. And certain cars, Lamborghinis, obviously, Ferraris, some are unique. Don't get me wrong. That's not every car. Let's not get ridiculous. Uh, but as you know, if you brought new cars, a lot of times you're losing a lot of value. You pull it off the lot, it loses about 20%. And about one, two years, that car for a lot of people's worth about 40%, if not less. And again, you don't acknowledge that. You just think, I have to have that car, which is great. And again, you get the car, now you're getting the payments, or you're buying it outright, you lost that cash. And I'm not saying anything bad against cars or buying new cars. I just want you to know, a lot of times, these things that we desire come with a cost. And sometimes that desire, uh, even after you get that car, and I know a lot of wealthy people, they usually get a new car, and literally in a year, two, they want to trade it in. They're bored. It's almost like they get a car and they want to show it off to all their friends or cruise around with it. Once they kind of get that rush, it's over. Now they're just getting in the same old car. So again, um, think about these things, right? Your desires. I tell people all the time, really figure out what you want out of your life. And again, 
I'm not telling you not to go after big things. Your big home. I don't care if you want to be the president of you know another company like Apple. You want to be a tech giant. You want to be whatever you want to be. God bless you. Go after it. But try to learn along the way not to, I think, be miserable, not getting what you want maybe also as quickly as you wanted and also it never being right. I used to say that about my screenplays or my movies. You can edit them forever and you can rewrite a script for the rest of your life. There has to come a time where you say, all right, it's time to move on to another desire or another component of this. What's that saying? They say, you know, you're trying to ride a dead horse. Uh, someone once said to me, not only are you trying to ride the dead horse, now you're starting to drag it. And I was like, wow, I never thought about that from that standpoint. Because I have a saying where people have anchors in their life, I call them. It could be people in your life. It could be debt. It could be whatever. And you have all these anchors in your, you know, over, you're a boat. You're throwing, you got all these anchors you're dragging. You're going nowhere. You have to learn to pick up the anchor, put it in the boat, or cut the anchor and keep trying to move forward. It's not easy to do. I get it. So, um, that's just another component of what, how I take, you know, I think about certain things. But as far as desires again go, I know a lot of us, you know, we listen to the law of attraction or all these other things. And I had a whole podcast on that regarding, you know, whatever you want can come to you and whatever you desire. And I love all that because I think it, what it really starts to program you is thinking you deserve these things. But here's the thing. No one's going to give you anything in your life. Maybe if you're, if you're extremely wealthy and people do give you things, God bless. But for most of us, no one's giving you shit, regardless what you desire. Okay? It's not coming to you. You have to go get it. Right? You have to. I don't care if you think you're going to win the lottery, like a lot of people say. And I said that, uh, you know, they go, they win the lottery. They're like, oh, I believed in the law of attraction. So I went out and played these numbers. No, you believed you'd win the lottery because you went and played the lottery. I don't necessarily believe in the lottery. I don't play the lottery. I can assure you I'm not going to win the lottery. But the odds of a plane landing on me are probably the same as that, which I'm not saying I won't ever play the lottery. But it's, and it's not worth it to throw in a couple dollars. But what I'm trying to say is when you have desires or you want something, sitting in your house daydreaming about it isn't going to always work. But you believing that you actually can get that. That's the component, I think, that I like about the law of attraction. I actually say you have to flip it. You don't wait for shit to come in your life. You run out to go get it, right? I can lay in my bed all day and think a certain way and believe a certain way. Shit ain't coming to me. I can go look at my bank account. People aren't throwing money into my bank account. If I want to make money, you have to go out and earn it for the most part. Unless, again, you know something I don't know. And if you do, God bless you. But for the most part, you have to attack. It's not, you know, having the law of attraction, you definitely want to start attracting yourself to all these components and your desires that you want as long as, again, they don't make you crazy and, again, they don't financially put you in debt or put a lot of stress on your life because with stress comes, obviously, health issues. And people really underestimate being under stress constantly, what that does to your body. Um, I don't think people really, really realize it. They think most people, oh, I'm too young. I don't have to worry about that or this or that. And also stress comes in different ways where then you start maybe drinking too much. You could be doing a lot of different things to hurt yourself or you're just behaving a certain way. You don't even realize it. You know, I think sometimes we just really don't acknowledge our behavior. I said this before when I was made my first film, I was able to be in my film and I played a certain role in there, which ended up being slightly like myself. I wrote it for my friend. He became a religious freak. But after I really learned the way I talk, and we did behind the scenes shooting as well, when you videotape yourself, the way you act, talk, I was kind of appalled at times at the way I behaved. And uh, sometimes I really liked the way they behave. I was like, oh, wow, that was very considerate of you. And other times I'm like, who are you talking to? Shut your, you shouldn't be talking to him like that. And I get I was under a lot of stress, maybe a lot of stress making a film. That is pretty stressful. And I want to get my point across, but. It's not easy directing people, but again, um, acknowledge uh, again who you are and your behavior. It all comes down to behavior. You don't realize your behavior is what's either attracting people to you or reflecting them out of your life. And uh, you know everybody's out to complain about how other people behave. Again, look in the mirror. Take a hard, good look at yourself. I can assure you, you are not perfect. You have good days, I say, bad days, good months, bad months, good years, bad years. You got to move forward. 
all right? Do not get caught up with uh, uh, desires destroying your life because I think so many people go their entire life either thinking, wow, man, uh, you know, I had, I wanted to get this and I didn't, I failed. I didn't get that. I failed. You're not looking at all the things you really succeeded at doing in your life. Even if you had children, maybe, you know, you wanted to raise them in a, you know, a certain environment and you weren't able to financially. That's okay. I promise you, most people, if you're a good parent, like my parents were basically, I, I wouldn't change a thing. No parents are perfect. And if you're a child, you know, and you grew up a certain way, you know that. You know, your parents, I'm sure, for the most part, a lot of parents wish they had more money or they could have done more for their kids. Maybe you're in that situation now. Don't get caught up in that. I'm I'm telling you, don't beat yourself down. You don't want to be at the end of the road or even in your middle age like, oh my God, I blew that. I should have went to college to do that or I should have went and did that. All the hindsight type of shit, you did what you wanted to do at that time because that's what you desired or you were put in a position where maybe you didn't have any other opportunities or you didn't know any better. You know, it's like, you know, a lot of people don't realize in at, at times how much more educated they became and it's easy now to say wow I wish I didn't do this or that you didn't know what you know now so of course but try to educate yourself now and learn from that and remember that but don't rehash that a lot of people just keep rehashing the past and they don't go to the future they almost keep wanting to live in the past and most people I know that were always talking about the past or are talking about the past their life wasn't that great in the past In their minds, I think they think it was, but it really wasn't. You know, some people, don't get me wrong, when you're younger and youthful, you do have a lot more energy and you can do a lot more things. And I get it at certain times, especially I hear this with my father and a lot of, you know, the the 60s was amazing because of this. The 70s was amazing because of this. The 80s was amazing because of this. Yeah, they were all great. They have their time. And I understand now is a lot different. It can be You know, social media, younger people, everybody's a lot different. That changed the game. You were lucky and fortunate enough to enjoy that when you did. But that's not coming back, right? The closest thing I tell a lot of my family members, and I may, you know, is like going to Italy. Because when when you go to Italy, they're not so, I guess you could say, Americanized. Um, And they're not so obsessed with a lot of materialistic things. They're obsessed with having a good life from what I think. They're about good food, good wine, good beer, good desserts, coffee, enjoying certain things, relaxing a little bit. Maybe they're too laxial daisial because I think the unemployment's like 50% there. But my point being is you can sometimes, you know, you know, if you want to be out of the rat race, get out of the rat race. Like I have friends that live in cities, obviously all over the United States and they're sick of the city or, you know, they make tons of money in cities and then they're bitching about, you know, traffic's insane, the taxes, uh, this, my uh, homeowners association, if they're in condos, business, this business, that I'm like, well, what do you want it to be like? Well, I want a slower pace. I want this. I want to then move to somewhere like that. What do you, it's not, it's not like the, they may have to go, you know, a hundred miles per hour. They're lying. They want all the, um, I guess you could say assets and all the things that come along with the city environment, which is more money, more people to contact, more sales, more all these different things. And then at the same time, they want to be slower paced. No, you don't. Or you would go be slower paced. Again, figure out your desires. You know, it'll never be enough. Like I'm fortunate enough. I visit everywhere. So, and I was really fortunate to see how people behave everywhere. And I'm not just talking one or two times. I'm talking, I visit city after city after city all over North America, and including Canada. I see, I know exactly how they kind of behave in Montreal. is much different than Toronto. Toronto behaves a lot different than Vancouver. A lot of the people there, uh, same with Victoria, say Canada. And then obviously people in Manhattan, a lot different than people in Boston, a lot different in Philly, a lot different in Chicago. Um, my point being is, If you want certain things, again, desires, don't bullshit yourself regarding what you really want. You want a lot of people like, oh, I just want the simple life to come back. Then go live in wherever you want. Like you could go live in Montana. You quit talking about it. Go. Chicago is not Montana. Montana is not Chicago. I hear this all the time with people wanting to live on the beach in the Midwest, Chicago, especially the East Coast. Man, I wish I could get to the beach in Florida. Well, the beach ain't coming to you. It's not like it's you got to fly to the moon or it's something you can't figure out. And that even goes with people. I live in Orlando, Florida. All I hear all the time is, man, I can never get to the beach. I'm like, really? It's an hour drive. 
who the fuck are you talking about? Not only we're central. You can literally go up to Daytona. You could go to Ormond. You could shoot or You could go to uh, Cocoa Beach. You go the other way, you're in Clearwater. You're in Sarasota. Then you head south, you're in South Florida. I mean, uh, you can even go to different parts of up on the panhandle. We're, we're basically a peninsula. How can you not get to water? Again, if you desire it, go get it. Those are actually simple desires, but you're always kind of lying to yourself. You're putting like a barrier in front of you. And again, how much money is it to drive to the beach? A lot of people want to live on the beach again. They don't want the expense, and I get it. And you don't have to, again, a desire may be like, hey, I'll just go to the, you know, the beach twice a month. I'll Airbnb it or I'll just go to a hotel. And you know what? I don't have to have the expense of buying a condo on the beach. Again, a lot of people I know, they're like, oh, I want a condo on the beach and I want to live here and I want this. Do you really want two mortgage payments? Unless you could buy it outright, which most people, do you want that extra homeowners association? Not only that, do you want to, you know, all these different things that are attached. Do you really want all those things? Because you could really simplify your life. And instead of owning a condo, like I just told you, hotels, Airbnb, or whatever, you'll still get kind of the same fix. I guess, like, like a, you know, they say, you know, I need my fix. Because after you do something quite often, then it becomes a little more not that big of a deal. And I tell people that who want to come to Florida all the time or want to do certain things, I'm like, just step into it. Like, I always wanted to travel and live in a hotel my whole life, I used to say. Well, I got my desire, and truthfully, like anything else, I finally had to realize that my desire wasn't specific enough. I only wanted to go in hotels and visit places I wanted to go to, which would say, hypothetically, back then it was New York. Back then it was LA. Back then it was San Diego. San Fran, maybe. Obviously, I live in Chicago, Florida, Italy, right? No, before you know it, I'm taking on a job where I realize most of the time, 90% of the time, I'm living in a hotel. I'm getting to travel, which is wonderful, and I got to see the country and North America. But you keep finding yourself going to different places that I don't necessarily want to go to at different times where the weather isn't what you think it is, which is usually bad a lot of times unless it's Florida or Southern California or maybe even Arizona. My point being is my desire wasn't specific. So again, that's another part of this is make sure your desires are very specific and you learn from them. Again, it took me a long time. I wanted to live in a hotel because I didn't want to be bothered making beds. I want to get up. I want to go eat what I want to eat. I want to leave. I go do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it. I didn't want to maintain a home anymore. That was really about it too. I don't want to wake up. I got to, on a weekend, I got to cut the lawn. I got to landscape. Or I got to do this. Or I got to remove leaves. Or I got to clean the house. All that shit. I still don't want to have really much to do with that. Call me lazy. Again, I know what my desires are and what they aren't. I learned at a younger age. And, but then again, I know that I don't necessarily want to be in a different hotel every day either because that becomes very exhausting or even a different hotel consistently. I do would really at this point, I'm trying to figure out my desires, which would be basically, I think something a little simpler, uh, a condo maybe at the beach, even though I don't like sand necessarily, I love the ocean looking at it, but I'm not going to be a guy who's going to fish at it. It's more, I just love being in warmer climates. I realize more than anything. I used to think, oh, I'm a city guy and I have to have this, I have to live in this area. No, I really realized what matters to me most desire wise is warmth. It's warm weather. I need that. Again, that's, that doesn't cost anything as long as where you live, you know, it may be more money at certain areas, but I can even find a very cheap place to live where I can be around warmer weather, right? That was what I had to figure out again regarding desires. I'm just giving you some examples. I don't mean to go on and on and on, but these are just things I went through in my life and I think a lot of people are like that as well. It could be as simple as saying, you know what? You know, instead of a sports car, I always wanted, you know, I love horseback riding. I wouldn't mind having, you know, a horse, but I'd have to live somewhere or I'd have to have this or that. Again, that may be the one of the most fulfilling things you've ever done in your life is owning something or being with an animal like that. My godmother did that. She owned a ranch. I, you know, and it's very hard on her. She ended up getting a bunch of horses, I realized, and I think her desire was to own a bunch of horses and do that. And now that she's getting older, again, maybe instead of getting the whole, you know, buying the ranch and getting all the horses, maybe just getting one. I'm just, again, using that for an example. When you look at your desires, sometimes downsize them. 
They don't have to be massive. So a lot of people may want a $20 million home on the ocean when the truth is you can probably get a condo for 350 grand, right? It may not be the same thing, but I'm just telling you. And again, a lot of people want to live in certain areas. I'll just use, for example, in Florida, you want Boca, Pompano, Lauderdale, Jupiter, uh, Palm Beach, whatever. Palm Desert, we could jump into California, uh, West Palm, whatever. And those areas are very expensive. And I hear a lot of people from up north, and that, I might as well throw this in too, so we could go to Naples, Sarasota, all these well-known places, right? And a lot of people from up north either want to get a condo or even when they move here, want to live in exclusive areas when where they live now isn't really that big of a deal. But when they do move, and I get it, the desire is to live near an ocean or be by the ocean or live in a beautiful community. Well, at first, you may not be able to do that. Again, downsize. You may want to get a condo, and I just discussed this with somebody on the airplane, is go to Cocoa Beach, right? That is a little off the beaten trail, small, quaint down. Uh, quaint town it's much more affordable condos are cheaper there homes are there you could get a lot closer to the ocean again it's not going to be Boca Pompano South Beach and I get it right but again a lot of people don't realize when you do go to Boca Pompano South Beach now the traffic the traffic is absolutely insane uh, the condo prices are insane homeowners is getting off the chart there's a lot that comes with that. They don't live there. They only go there to vacation. So to deal with it for a week is wonderful. To live there, whole different ballgame. You gotta pay for certain parking places. There's a lot that gets wrapped into that. Not only homeowners, you know, if you live in a condo. Uh, also, obviously we have um, hurricanes. There's a lot of different things you really gotta think about regarding your desires. You may just have to step back and go, you know what? Instead of spending, you know, or if I'm gonna be a snowbird, $500,000 on a condo here, I might just go over a couple towns and do this here. Save me a lot of money and time, right? That's just something, again, I'm just trying to explain as far as desires downsizing. So I'm going to wrap it up there. We're going on 40 minutes. Thanks for listening to my podcast. I hope this stuff uh, kind of sticks with you. Um, I also have, like I mentioned earlier, my Mastering Self-Confidence program. If you get a chance, check that out. Uh, it's to help men really try to find the woman or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce. Um, and then I have also a YouTube channel, Rich Chalenza, it's just my name. I'm posting all different things, uh, stuff like this, but also me traveling all over the country. I try to uh, show people uh, how to travel affordably, how to save money and things in that nature. So I'm gonna wrap it up there. Take care and I wish you nothing but the best.